So hello guys, this is Dr. Ajinka here and today I'm going to show you a case. Uh, this is a case of a orbital floor blowout fracture. Now this patient is a young female, uh, say around mid-twenties. She had a history of trauma, uh, a blunt trauma to her right orbit, uh, following which she experienced uh, numbness over her right upper lip and the right uh, nasolabial fold region and a lot of swelling periorbital swelling however the patient's vision was not affected and still so far the patient's vision is still intact uh, however the patient did not also have any orbital uh, loss of movements the orbital movements were completely normal on all sides the rotational movements was also perfect and the patient had presented to my opd actually uh, roughly around eight days of the incident so the patient somehow somehow started on treatment medications and the swelling was uh, the, the, the swelling was resolved but uh, when asked i advised for the patient's city scan and so i'm going to show you the patient's city scan right now and how to diagnose and actually see for the basic points uh, for a blowout fracture in case of a orbital traumatic case so here you can see I'm going to show you the coronal view first because that's the most easy to understand uh, for the basics. And uh, I'm going to show you from the very anterior aspect. So we all know the basics of CT scan. I have done a lot of CT scan lectures previously on my YouTube channel. You can go and visit them and have a detailed look inside the video to know the basics of CT scan. So first things first, this is the right frontal, that's the left frontal sinus, completely normal, no collection whatsoever. That's the frontal lobe of the brain. Uh, that's the frontal process of maxilla, that's the nasal septum, that's the bilateral inferior turbinates. You can see the orbit starting here. So, so far the patient, uh, you can see, you cannot appreciate any swelling on the CT scan or, or any soft tissue shadow over here because there is no such orbital swelling left so far. Initially, the patient had swelling, a lot of swelling, but then because of the medications, the swelling reduced. So that, hence the reason, that's the reason you cannot see any swelling or soft tissue, uh, you know, shadow uh, on the extra orbital compartment over here. So as I go behind, you can start seeing. So your, your main aim is to see the area, the location of the blowout fracture. So if I can just take it over here you can actually start seeing the fracture line over here. So if you can compare the two sides on both the areas, the right and the left. So if I go again anteriorly, you can start seeing the very anterior aspect of the maxillary sinus. And you can already see some kind of opacification over here, soft tissue shadow. And if the, however, the bony floor here looks to be intact, so as to on the left side. But then as you keep on going behind, you can start seeing there's a deficient area over here, right here, which is not uh, on the case of left side. So you can see an actual breach in the continuity of the bony floor, or you can see the roof of the maxillary sinus. And adjoining this area, you can see a soft tissue opacification. Now, now at this point, it is very important to uh, you know examine the patient's orbital movement because if there is any diplopia the patient is having any diplopia it means the muscles the extra orbital muscle mostly the inferior rectus or the inferior oblique uh, may be involved in the in the orbital blowout fracture so you have to focus your concentration on the uh, the inferior rectus and the extra orbital muscles in the inferior part of the globe. So if I try to change the uh, the shadow of the CT scan right now, so you can see I want to make the soft tissues more prominent. So as you can see, if I can just zoom this for you guys. So you can actually see that's the medial rectus muscle and somewhat if we start to go behind, that's the eyeball as such. That's the inferior rectus muscle that's the superior rectus muscle and somehow when you see the anterior ethmoidal artery you can start seeing the superior oblique muscle as well over here so that is more prominently you can see that's the inferior rectus muscle over here and um, you can see the optic nerve you can start seeing the optic nerve as well that's the lateral rectus muscle over there so you can see the inferior rectus muscle is properly within the orbit and you can see a huge fracture segment over here the entire segment of the floor of the orbit 
has fractured and become an altogether a different segment you can compare the same thing on the left side you can see this is completely intact so you can see a lot of soft tissue pacification but in this case the inferior rectus muscle is not getting pulled up into the maxillary sinus or towards the fracture side hence the patient did not have any diplopia on movements also the patient could easily look down without any lagging of the movements so that is one important thing you have to keep in mind second thing is that the patient had a complaint of numbness and altered sensations on the right nasolabial fold area and the upper lip so basically the medial part of the cheek area so you have to keep in mind the course and the root of the infraorbital nerve. That's the most second most important thing in this patient right now. Now, the decision whether to take this patient for surgery or not depends solely on the involvement of the orbital muscles. That is the extraorbital ocular muscles. If had the inferior rectus muscle been pulled up towards the fracture side, we may have considered the patient for surgery the second point for the surgery is that we have to look for the course and the involvement of the in free uh, the infraorbital nerve so if you can see over here that was the very anterior aspect now when the maxillary sinus starts you can see at the very end now i'm showing you or uh, i'm showing you this on the left side to be more precise over here so if i can just take this a little bit behind you can actually see you can actually see this is this is the soft tissue pacification within the roof of the maxillary sinus over here. That is basically the foramen, the infraorbital uh, course, the canal of the infraorbital nerve. That's the infraorbital nerve you can see here running along the roof of the maxillary sinus. The same place you can compare on this side is the exact side where the fracture is seen on the right roof of the maxilla or the floor of the orbit. So. You, you must have seen a lot of cases where the surgeon is doing a modified endoscopic denkers or a mega meatal entrostomy for the maxillary sinus called as MMA. You must have seen that at the roof of the uh, maxillary sinus, mostly from towards the pterygopath and fossa area, you can see the impression of the infraorbital nerve running along the floor of the orbit. So that's the case. This is that floor of the orbit and that's the infraorbital nerve there. And exactly in this side, you can see that's the infraorbital nerve, but you cannot be so sure because you cannot see this prominence of the nerve body. So as I start going behind, you can actually see a foramen or a canal type of a structure right here. You can see something like a canal. You can actually see the infraorbital nerve canal here as well. If it's prominent, you can see this is the opacification, a small opacification, that's the nerve right there. And the same place, you can see a similar structure like in a canal, you can see something like this. So this is basically the entire plate. If I go anteriorly again, you can see that's the entire plate of the infraorbital, uh, or you can say the, the floor of the orbit through which the infraorbital nerve runs into through a canal. And you can actually see that this entire plate has fractured and dislocated below, like an oblique slant over here. And as I keep on going behind, you can actually see that the canal of the nerve is lying within this fracture segment. Correct me if I'm wrong, but so far, whatever study scan is showing me right there, this appears to be the infraorbital nerve canal. And if you, if you think otherwise, please let me know in the comment sections below. So, so far, this is the infraorbital foramen, the canal, not the foramen, the canal basically the, along with the nerve. And somehow this patient came for second follow-up to my clinic and in the second follow-up i had started uh, the patient uh, on tablet chimeral fort all sorts of anti-inflammatories and no stimulants or uh, in the first visit itself and when the second visit the patient started developing some improvement in the sensations and the patient also started having some improvement in the sensations over the cheek area so we can just assume that there is a little bit of compression surrounding edema on the nerve because of this fracture but as such i cannot see any bony fracture sharp segments which is piercing the nerve around here but for that you always have to go for an mri in detail 
so far this on the city scan and the patient's clinical improvement and the clinical signs and symptoms i can assume that this patient is safe to be kept on observation and medical therapy sos if the patient does not develop any improvement in the the sensations on the cheek and the upper lip area say around 45 days max to max minimum 15 to 30 days uh, the max period is that you can wait for up till three months anyways the fibrosis is going to take place a new uh, 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 the, this bone gap is going to get filled with fibrotic tissue the orbital fat is seen prolapsing over here the muscle is safe so there is no active surgical intervention required at least from my side so this is how the ct scan is more important along with the clinical correlation uh, before taking any patient for a huge major surgery so suppose if we do take this patient for surgery there is no use we will have to do a mega meatal antrostomy to have an access to the lateral floor of the orbit and so that or uh, maybe all max to max we may have to do a modified denkers i think the mega meatal antrostomy should be su sufficient enough so what you can do is just uh, the prolapsed orbital fat and the soft tissue you may just you know uh, protrude back uh, put it inside back in the orbital content or you can just coagulate this area and you can just reposit the bony fracture segment or you can just uh, apply some pressure from below removing this bony part of the segment uh, may prove to be harmful because somehow it seems to be carrying that infra orbital nerve in this area so any surgical intervention you have to be very careful to not injure the nerve iatrogenically otherwise the patient will land up in permanent sensation loss and may give rise to a sensation of pain or heaviness for the patient for lifetime so you got to be very careful so at least first observe wait and watch give medical therapy as much as possible and fibrosis will eventually take place and so far the patient for me is having clinical improvement so i will not go for any surgical intervention at present so so far in the city scan that was the only positive finding and the patient still does not have any drooping of the eyelids or any whatsoever sort of uh, movement issues in the eyeball so if um, if the patient develops any other symptoms or worsens definitely i'll give you a video which will show the new update but if the patient is having a good improvement similarly i'll let you know uh, if the patient is improving or not because we have to keep the patient on a long-term observation before going for any active surgery so i hope you have this doubt uh, cleared in your minds if you have any doubts still left you can just directly message me i'll be happy to clear all your doubts thank you so much